Do I need to make it closer to yes, my please. face? Okay, thanks. are listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Erin. I'm Bree. And I'm Rachel. Today is an Adventures in Lutheranism. These are always fun episodes. We get to explore a certain aspect of Lutheranism that uh, you may or may not know about. And today we get to talk about something that a lot of you probably have some relative experience with, and that is church shopping. So, Mm -hmm. Rachel, Mm -hmm. take it away. Yes, this is an adventure that I honestly, I really, if you have never been in a position of having to go church shopping, I envy you because that means you have the kind of stability in your life that has never (laughs) been part of my experience. (laughs) Yeah. But most of us do have to do some church shopping at one point or another in our lives. We'll talk a little bit about the phrase church shopping a little later. But to start, just a little background. I've done a lot of church shopping in my life because we tend to move around a lot. Been married a little less than two decades, and I think we're over a dozen homes now. Mm -hmm. And our church membership has often admittedly been tied to my husband's ministry, you know, from fieldwork assignments, vicarage, his pastorate, etc. But there have always and there have been windows of time when we've been free agents. Like now, for example. uh, (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) Ken is assigned to a base chapel, but I would like to also, you know, have a, a a home Lutheran church in the area, and we just don't yet. So whenever that happens, we go church shopping, and because we never like to do anything halfway, or at least I don't, we tend to exhaust all possible options before making a final decision. So when we had a year to burn between college and seminary, we visited I, and I counted 17 churches in the Fort Wayne area <laughs> wow. before, before we joined the one that was eight blocks from our house. <laughs> and then we, of course, got assigned to a fieldwork church 45 minutes away as soon as he started seminary. <laughs> so, same thing happened when we moved to St. Louis, when I started work at the, the Lutheran Witness. Ken was in between calls. So we visited I want to say it was 14, but it was at least a dozen churches of all Mm -hmm. shapes and sizes and worship styles before falling in love with a church family that we still miss to this day. On the East Coast, as all our saltwater Lutherans can attest to, church shopping is a little less of an adventure if you're trying to Mm -hmm. stay within your denominational boundaries. We visited all both LCMS churches in Virginia Beach before we settled down there. Mm -hmm. And uh, in Connecticut, we've been limited not only by distance, because I really don't want to travel more than 20 or 30 minutes to church, but also by timing. Because Ken has duties at the base chapel during prime time on Sunday mornings, we need to find a church that either has a really early service or really late Mm -hmm. service or like some Mm -hmm. midweek something that we can plug into. And so when you combine Saltwater District plus that list, our church shopping took like a week and a half this time. Um, (laughs) (laughs) But I am looking forward very much so to Advent midweeks when I can get back out there and visit a few more churches because a lot more churches have services in the middle of the week during Advent. Mm -hmm. So that's my experience. It's something that I enjoy doing, not forever, because I love having a church family that I can call my own. But to get out there and see what's happening in the broader world is always Mm -hmm. eye-opening for me. I do realize that church shopping is a loaded term Mm -hmm. and that there's some controversy around using that term. Some people tend to bristle, and I think for Mm -hmm. good reason, because American consumerist mindsets have really infected the church and enhanced division. Mm -hmm. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Um, Oh, yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) (laughs) We only have an hour, guys. Oh, right. Yes. No, consumerism in the church is really a plague. It says that 
my church is really, if I go there, it's about customers always right. What's in it for me? Not how mm -hmm. can I be a servant to the people of God in this place? Mm -hmm. It's really consumerism turns church churchship on its head. Then it also creates an outlet for people who may be disgruntled. Some people who are, when I church shop, it's because I'm in a new area and I really want to find a good, uh, you know, a church home that is a really good fit for a family. Mm -hmm. But some people, when they're church shopping, what they're really saying is, I don't like my current church. And so I'm going to just see what else is out there. And if you're coming from a place of disgruntlement, I think that that is something to, you know, maybe do some self-examination there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's easy to go into church shopping with a checklist and treat it like house hunting. What, and there's some plan. yeah, <laughs> open floor plan, granite countertops, you know, good youth group for That's the kids. <laughs> <laughs> and the ensuite is non-negotiable. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> so there are some real dangers in church shopping. And as I was thinking through this episode, I was thinking, re reminded of C.S. Lewis, who has some words on church shopping, as we would call it in the screw tape letters, which for those of you who aren't familiar is a tongue in cheek book of fictional letters from a senior demon to a junior tempter. So basically advice on how to sabotage a Christian's life. And he writes in one of these letters, surely you know that if a man can't be cured of church going, the next best thing is to send him all over the neighborhood looking for the church that suits him until he becomes a taster or connoisseur of churches. Now, the reasons for this are, he gives a couple of reasons why basically the devil loves church shopping. He says that if people are going to their local church, it brings together people of different classes and psychology together in the kind of unity the enemy desires. It also, the suitable church, and I love this quote, makes the man a critic where the enemy, that is God, wants him to be a pupil. Hmm. So, and Lewis actually lived this out. He made a point of joining and faithfully attending the Anglican church that was geographically closest to him hmm. for pretty much his entire Christian life. Mm -hmm. He didn't, it's, it's kind of interesting. He didn't particularly enjoy going to church. He didn't like hymns. What? I know. He thought they were, <laughs> <laughs> what was it? Fifth rate poetry set to sixth rate music or I'm butchering the what? quote, but he <laughs> was not a fan of him <laughs> and Sarah now right now, Lewis. Oh, but I mean, he was also probably a lot smarter, better read and more theologically astute than most of the vicars at his church. Let's be honest. So but he went anyway because he felt it was it was part of being a Christian. If you are a Christian, you go to church. And it was also he found a good school for the soul to worship alongside people who made up this cross section of the community that he might not, other, not otherwise have been exposed to, which is wonderful, this idea of of church being a, a way to celebrate diversity. I love this quote, too. He says, I came up against different people of quite different outlooks and different education, and then gradually my conceit just began peeling off. I realized that the hymns, which were just sixth-rate music, here you go, Sarah, were nevertheless being sung with devotion and benefit by an old saint in elastic side boots in the opposite pew. And then you realize that you aren't fit to clean those boots. It gets mm. you out of your solitary conceit. Hmm. So when you're church shopping, obviously you want to be careful not to be looking for a church that is so full of people who are just like you that you miss out on this wonderful opportunity to be exposed to people who aren't just like you, except in the one thing essential to all of your lives, and that is your faith in Christ. Jesus! Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> so, yes, church shopping can be a bad thing. And if you decide to be like C.S. Lewis and immediately join the Lutheran church that is literally closest to your front door and then stick with that congregation forever, come what may, I actually totally commend you. That's pretty cool to do that. Yeah. However, in my experience, visiting churches, and here I'm going to switch from church shopping with its consumerist, uh, you know, baggage mm -hmm. to visiting, mm -hmm. can be a very, very good thing for you. At least it has been for me, for my faith and for my love of church. It can get you out of your bubble, help you make new friends, 
and help you see, like, as we say all the time, Lutheran does indeed look a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. If you want to see some of those different ways, go visit some other churches filled with fellow believers. Mm -hmm. Worshiping, you know, as a visitor can help you develop a deeper appreciation for what's really essential in worship. I think every church has some traditions, and I'm not knocking tradition here. I love traditional worship so much. But I think every church has some traditions that are unique to just that church. Mm -hmm. And, you know, think of the church that automatically stands as soon as the pastor gets up in the pulpit. You can, like, hear the pews. It's not in the bulletin. They just do it. (laughs) You know, and if you get used to that, you might think, okay, that is, that's just how church is supposed to be. And then you go to another equally traditional church Mm -hmm. and they don't stand when the pastor gets in the pulpit. And you're sort of shaken a little bit. But then you realize... Okay, maybe that's not essential. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Nothing makes me more anxious than going to a church for the first time. And like, you don't want to sit in the first row because when it comes time for Holy Communion, like you don't know what you're going to do. No, you don't know what what happens. happens. (laughs) Nothing like riddles me with more anxiety. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you don't want to sit in the uh, middle of the church because you know that that's probably where somebody that's their pew. You know, the only place to be truly safe is right in those first three rows because, you know, no one will ever sit there. It's true. (laughs) Off limits. otherwise. Church can also, visiting other churches really, I always come away with tons of great ideas. You know, reading the bulletin, seeing what's going on in their life, how they're serving in their communities, how they're, you know, building up the fellowship among themselves, their music, their, you know, everything. Just I come away filled with inspiration. For whether or not I end up at this church, I'm going to have some thoughts about, oh, we should try this thing that they did that was really cool. Church shopping, just getting darker for a little bit. If your current church, and I know we've had some, we fielded some questions like this in the Ladies Lounge Facebook group a while back. If your church has has truly fallen prey to false doctrine or some sort of serious, serious issue, you know, church shopping can be a way to remind yourself, get out of a bad situation and remind yourself you don't have to stay. Mm -hmm. You know, fidelity to a congregation is fantastic. And reconciliation is possible. Mm -hmm. But there are, just like in a bad marriage, you know, there are, if it's adultery or abuse, you just got to go. You know, in a church, if it's false doctrine, you just got to go. And Mm -hmm. so church shopping can, can give you that escape. And finally, just as a on a on an evangelism note, visiting for a while before you settle down, one, it makes you sensitive to what it's like to visit a church so that mm-hmm. you can be more welcoming to other people. But it also helps make sure that you wind up at a church that you can really, truly cherish, participate fully in the life of it, and welcome others into it. Because, mm-hmm. and I'm speaking a little bit from experience here, and I won't say where, when, or how, but sharing the love of Christ with your neighbors and inviting them to come with you to your church comes a lot more easily if you love your church family and are super excited to show up on Sundays. It's really hard to invite people to join you on Sunday if you feel even the tiniest bit ambivalent or worst case scenario, embarrassed about the church you attend. Like that is an impediment to the gospel. Mm -hmm. And it's worth taking some time to get, get yourself and your family situated in order to say, okay, neighbors, we got something good here come share it with us. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, if you move around a lot, there's no getting past it. Church Mm -hmm. visiting, church shopping is going to be in your in your life because you've got to land somewhere. So I'm going to turn it over to you briefly. What have your experiences? I mean, obviously, hopefully not 17 churches in one town, but what have your experiences been with the church shopping? And what do you look for? You know, maybe I'm the odd man out here, but I haven't really had a whole lot of church shopping experience and I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing or a bad thing I know that um, my husband in particular seems to be very much of that C.S. Lewis mindset that (laughs) wherever we live that's that we're just gonna go to the closest LCMS church and so I don't know church shopping Kind of makes me uneasy and maybe that's just because I have never done it before Mm -hmm. really very much. But I will say that 
because my husband is going to be a pastor, like that is somehow removed, like that's off the table pretty much. Like, I don't, I don't necessarily have a choice. You know, I said that too. Um, and here uh, I am. So that's, that's yeah. nice. That's nice. So, but I mean, for me, I don't know. I, cause here's the thing is like when I go on vacation and stuff or like donor visits, I love going to the LCMS congregations that are there. Mm-hmm. And if there's time for us to go to church during a vacation, like we will make time to do that. And it's really, it is fascinating to see all of the different approaches, the demographic makeups of different congregations, the the ways in which the liturgy is handled and various rituals are handled. So I real like I love I love visiting churches when I'm when I'm traveling, but I think overall I I am as long as I'm in a place where Christ crucified is is the main thing. Mm-hmm. I don't I don't really think there's a whole lot else that is going to rub me the wrong way actually. Mm-hmm. At least that's that's what I hope. <laughs> <laughs> so I also similar, I mean I haven't had to change churches since I moved to St. Louis. That was the last time I was picking a church. There's been only a couple times in my in my life so far where I have been the one picking mm-hmm. my church. I guess twice. Once when I moved to Houston and then I suppose I could have <laughs> it would have been really weird though. I could have I could have declared that I was going to pick a church different from my parents during the year I lived with them after college, <laughs> but that would have been super weird. <laughs> so I the pastor? Exactly. Whoa. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Dad. Uh, Sorry, so <laughs> there was just the one, one time in Houston, and then when I moved to St. Louis, again, I was in a position where I had to, I had to select the church that I would join. And in that case, I did go into it with, that was very much my, my mindset. I, was not familiar with C.S. Lewis's declaration or anything. I so I picked. I wanted specifically a church that was close to me because I did. I knew I would be commuting to work, and I did not want to commute to church, mm-hmm. and I did not want to find myself in a position where, with Wednesday night services and different church activities, mm-hmm. I would be finding myself trying to persuade myself against, well, it's going to be, that's still another half hour that Mm -hmm. I have to drive and Mm -hmm. then a half hour back home. So it was very much, I I wanted something that was going to be very close to my house. My church is, I think, a half mile from my house. And I think I've, I think I visited two churches, but I landed on the one that I visited first. And it was just, (laughs) that was that in that case, it was, it was the more friendly church. It used, taught the Bible, had the Lutheran hymnal. And I was like, okay, this will (laughs) do. So I really didn't have any big, I I mean, I, I didn't have any big like consideration, like, oh, I better listen really carefully. Are they really going to be preaching the true word or anything like that? I just, they were didn't throw me off and they've continued being a good church. They passed the know. vibe <laughs> check. And, <laughs> and indeed, like that's my family. I, you know, I've got my my work group of friends and I've got my church friends and the church friends all live in the neighborhood. Mm-hmm. And that's just that's how my life has worked out. And it sounds wonderful. I don't regrets. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. My experience is kind of similar and kind of very different. We approached church shopping, maybe from a slightly snobby point of view, if I can say that about ourselves, but I don't, I mean, if you know me in person, we can be a little snobby about this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Let's be honest. You know, look, you know what you like. <laughs> Nobody can be mad at that. It, yeah, that's true. I mean, I was at one church my entire childhood up until I left home for college. So I had zero experience of approaching having to pick a church until I went to school in Chicago. And at that point, my home church pastor was like, you should go to this church with this pastor and I will contact the pastor's wife and get you a ride. (laughs) Done deal. And I was like, all right. So I didn't have to pick a church when I went to school in Chicago. And then when we ended up living in Chicago after we got married, at that point, uh, we weren't totally happy with the church we were going to. So we, um, I knew another pastor at a church out in Elmhurst and we're like, well, I know the Mm -hmm. pastor and 
music's great. So let's just go there. And then we got involved in the music program. A bit of an anomaly about us is that when we visit churches, my husband has a very good voice. And so every church we go to, they always ask us to join their (laughs) choir, which isn't a problem if we're on vacation Uh because we're like, oh, well, we don't live here. So sorry, no. (laughs) But when we're local and going to churches, we have to be it's and maybe my husband isn't as doesn't feel as awkward about this as I do. But I'm like, <laughs> we uh, like I'm I'm very aware of the fact that they're always going to ask us to join their choir, and then I'm like, well, no, sorry. You should start <laughs> singing in like a like a Cookie Monster voice, like. <laughs> It's just, I don't know. Like, yes. just get like a little. I'm just, I'm probably over aware of that fact. I when think I'm you're really... probably overthinking this, Sarah. I, <laughs> overthinking is my middle name. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, it's very appropriate. Maybe you should just roll up in a t shirt that says, Don't ask me to join your choir. <laughs> well, this is a funny story. Uh oh. Um, <laughs> so then we moved to St. Louis, and obviously there's, there's a bazillion churches in St. Louis. Oh, we did bazillion. not go the route of picking the one closest to our house, partially because. We were in apartments. We didn't know we were going to settle down um, and buy a house because we were planning on buying a house here. So we we had a a bit of a radius in the in St. Louis County that we were looking and we did actually make a list of things we wanted because we knew that there were going to be a lot of options and we had to narrow it down somewhere if we weren't going geographically. So obviously we were looking for a good, solid, long gospel preaching, which doesn't really narrow it down that much at all because no. you're going to get that probably mostly anywhere you go. One would, um, hope. We, One would hope. You would hope. Yes. Mm-hmm. So that, I mean, that didn't really do anything, but it was on our list. We, <laughs> we were looking for somewhere with every Sunday communion. That was something that's yeah. very important to us. Mm-hmm. And surprisingly, there aren't a lot of churches in St. Louis, at least five years ago, that do every Sunday communion at the same service. So that actually narrowed down the list more than mm-hmm. we were expecting. We did a lot of research on websites. We had listened to a lot of sermons, kind of got a feel for everything. But our pastor in Chicago at gave us a list of three places too. And he's like, you should check out these places. They're good. And I, I would trust their pastors with with you as my current members. And we we're like, great. So those were the three that we ended up visiting frequently to kind of narrow it down. And one of them ended up kind of closing. So that one was out. And then the other one we couldn't get to on time ever. So we <laughs> <laughs> were like, well, maybe this isn't a great idea. That's but, a sign. But the church that we ended up joining, it kind of just felt like family, which was which still feels like a weird reason to join a church. But when you have kind of equal criteria between the two you're trying to pick between we're like well we have to choose on some basis Mm -hmm, and so if this feels like our church family then i guess we join here the other funny part though is that we went to a choir rehearsal before we were members (laughs) and i told my husband i was like you know that we're gonna end up joining this church because we're going to a choir rehearsal and that is exactly what happened and he ended up Mm -hmm. starting to direct the choir before we were even members too (laughs) so that happened Uh, but i mean (laughs) At the end of the day, it I mean it comes down to word and sacrament. Yep. If you're getting mm-hmm. if you're getting law and gospel, you're getting Christ in the word, you're having the sacraments rightly administered. Right. I mean, you, you, what else are you going to do? I mean, we it's just, not even it's not it's not what the vibe is even. Like you yeah. could go you could go to the church where everyone's cool and friendly and nice and you feel welcomed. You're right. But if you're not being fed spiritually, it's not you're going to know it and it's not going to mm-hmm. feel yeah. right. I'm sorry, but you're it's just not going to feel right. Right. It's just it's a weird and not maybe it's an anomaly here. I don't know. We just we the three of us happen to live in a place where there's just a lot of options. Yeah. So if you like visiting places and mm-hmm. choosing choosing something, I mean, you have to have some sort of criteria of where you're going to where you're going to pick. What's kind of sad is that now that we've bought a house, we are actually 25 minutes away from church instead of like five minutes. Darn but it. I know. And there is a church five minutes away from us where Rachel it's, used to go. So. Yeah, it's the <laughs> church I still miss. So, yes. Anyway, but, you know, your church family is your church family. And that's. That's great. Right. Yeah, um, we love them. Yeah. So, Sarah, you mentioned your list, and I thought it would be interesting to sort of explore this. What do you look for if you have a checklist, what you're looking for in a new church home? And we mentioned law and gospel preaching. Yeah, it's got to be Bible-based. It's got to be Christ-centered. I need Jesus delivered to me from the pulpit every week, you know, and not just the pulpit. The Bible study, you know, mm. needs to be solid. Now, personally, I would add to that. I like something that's going to make me think. So a certain Mm -hmm. level of intelligence, not just like, you know, Hallmark style anecdotes the whole time. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And honest. Oh, my goodness. Like 
make sure that you are that you that the that the preaching is really tied to real life. Liturgical worship. Now, I realize this may not be for every listener out there may not be a huge priority. And for me, it's less of a priority than for some people who are very much it needs to follow the liturgy in the hymnal exactly, exactly, exactly. Um, that would be me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I love it when it happens, but it's, you know, obviously I have been in situations where pickiness is just not possible. And yet the major parts of the liturgy for me, they've got to be there. I've got to have that confession and absolution. I've got to have the liturgy of the word and, and of the sacraments. You know, I've got to have the canticles and the colics. And even if they call them the prayer of the day and hymn of mm. praise, you know, it's it, yep. it really, that for me is worship. You mentioned the sacraments. Yeah. Regular opportunities to commune and, and a general love and appreciation for the sacraments. Like it's not a mm -hmm. chore. It's not something we do because we have to. It's something we look forward to and we celebrate. Here's a big one for me. And it's not something that people think about a lot when they're thinking about welcoming visitors. For me, high on the list is people who genuinely love each other, mm -hmm. love the Lord and are happy to be there. Like mm -hmm. you can be as welcoming as you want to the to the stranger in your midst, but if it's obvious that you all aren't that friendly with one another, mm -hmm. I don't want to be part of that. <laughs> yeah. But when you walk into a place and you can sense that they genuinely enjoy being together in this place and that they aren't ashamed or afraid to talk about Christ in their midst, that is so wonderful. I just want to be there. For our family, I love to see a broad range of ages and churches, and I know that's not always possible. There are a lot of gray-haired churches. There are also some churches that are very heavy on the young people and don't have any older people. And either one for me is not ideal. I want to, I want there to be kids for my kids to play with, tiny kids for my kids to babysit, you know, slightly older people for them to look up to, and then I want them to have many grandmas and grandpas in the church. Like that is, mm -hmm. it's a family, and it you know, having that broad range of ages and also backgrounds really adds to that. No drama. If there's drama, I'm just like, <laughs> I'll go elsewhere. <laughs> now, obviously, there's always a lot of drama under the scenes. But if it's if the drama is so bad that a visitor can sense it on a first time <laughs> visit. That is impressive <laughs> drama. It's red. true. <laughs> And then just do the, a warm welcome for newcomers. Yeah, they love being with each other, but are they cl so clickish that they don't have room to like open up the circle and hair. bring me in? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she doesn't go hair. She doesn't yeah. even go hair. <laughs> and then finally, an added bonus. This isn't even on the main list because honestly, if Christ is there, the rest is sort of less important to me. But I love good music. And having yes. good music is a big draw. A good music program was also on our list. Uh -huh. Kind of a, I mean, my husband wanted to be, and we both want to be in choir. He wants to be very involved in in music wherever we go because that's his wheelhouse. So yeah. we we needed to end up at a church that had a good music program. So also because that's that is how we serve in a church. Also because that mm -hmm. is one of our both of our, our biggest talents. Mm -hmm. We wanted to be in a place where we would both be able to. Use them to really use mm -hmm. our talents in service to the church. And that that is where we ended up. And it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To end this episode, I'm digging <laughs> back into my long experience of showing up as a complete stranger at various churches, walking mm -hmm. in the door. And I wanted to share a list, two lists, actually. First list, top five lines guaranteed to make me cringe all the way out the door. <laughs> Oh, I can't yes. wait. I can't <laughs> wait. Things, hmm. things that people can okay. say that will immediately make me bristle a little bit. So mm -hmm. from the greeter at the door, we really need more young families here. <laughs> and we could really use another Sunday school teacher. I don't suppose you'd be oh, interested. Yeah. Yikes. Uh, we used to say desperation is a stinky cologne. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it is. You know, and, and that goes back to the are you? Are you, do you love your church just as it is, you know, and you want to welcome us in? Okay. From the pastor at the beginning of the service, I see we have some visitors. Why don't you all stand up and wave so oh, we can see who you are? Worst. Oh. Introvert's worst nightmare. Yes. Yeah. Worst. <laughs> Very true. Okay. From the pastor again at the end of the service and give you peace. Amen. Now, everyone, before we sing our last hymn, 
We're going to have just a brief voters meeting while you're all still oh! here. I promise it won't take oh, long. Oh, foul on if- the play. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the church po- politicking and church pol- polity separate from the worship service. And if you're going to have mm. a voters meeting after the service, for goodness sake, give the visitors a chance to go beforehand. <laughs> yes. Or serve delicious oh food. I was going to say, the we, we always serve lunch during our voters meeting. There ain't meetings. fried chicken. I wow. ain't voting. <laughs> That's what wow. I always say. Stay for the lunch, but you don't have to. Well, I mean, well, if you're a, vo- if you're a visitor, you, you can't vote anyway. I know. That's true. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Give a chance to get out. Yeah. Yeah. It's all <laughs> number, f- number four. From anyone, maybe more than one person at once. Oh, You've no. been mugged. Here, take this commemorative coffee mug to remind you of your visit. <laughs> 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 that was a big thing. Of, uh, I want to say when we were early on in our uh, mid 2000s, maybe, was churches giving up coffee mugs to first time visitors. And if there were multiple people in the family, they all got a mug. And then oh suddenly goodness. your cupboard is full of mugs uh-huh. of the church yeah. you visited one time. No and I, I mean, a little gift, a takeaway uh-huh. is a fantastic, very welcoming, but make sure it's something that isn't going to be a burden. Like, and then like a fridge magnet or a pen. Yeah. Yeah. Those are great. Or a sticker. Or a sticker. Or a sticker. We love pen, our stickers. Or shares. a compact mirror or a Kleenex pack. Oh, hey, we have those. Tissue oh, hey. pocket <laughs> packs are great. They're, u- they're useful and use upable. That's right. Use up a bowl. All right. Last one on this list from everyone. Yes, there were five five seconds of silence. It just hit you. It just hit you right in the neck, didn't it? It did. Right in the throat. If you show up at a church and Mm. nobody says anything to you, and this has happened to me before, Mm -hmm. that is, is, uh, it's hard to go back. Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. On the other side, here are the top five lines that will eagerly have me coming back for more. Oh, this is the way to finish. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Redemption. On a high note. Uh-huh. Redemption. Number one. Hi, I don't think I've seen you here before. Are you new? I'm fill in the blank name. Just a simple turnaround in the pew. Say acknowledge that someone's new here and that they're welcome and that you would like to know them better. Actually, most of these are on sort of along the same lines. <laughs> Number two. I know we just met, but would it be weird if I looked you up on Facebook? I'd love to keep in touch. How do you spell your last name? Uh, <laughs> Facebook yeah. is is great for this sort of thing, this this casual, like, I want to have you sort of in my Rolodex, but not have you yeah. around my dining table quite yet. Uh, so it's a great first step into friendship. Number three, we have a women's Bible study or fill in like youth group, children's play group, et cetera, that meets <laughs> once a week or once a month, want to join us? And can I have your email address to send you more information? (laughs) Mm. The answer is, yeah, I kind of would like to join you if I can. And I can always ignore the email. (laughs) That's true. True. From the pastor in the greeting line, would you take a moment to fill out the guest register? I'd love to follow up. And if you're willing, meet you from co- for coffee sometime soon and get to know you oh, better. That's nice. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. nice. Yep. Not just a card in the mail, but a, mm-hmm. I want to get to know you. Eyeball to eyeball. Eyeball to eyeball. Eyeball to eyeball. <laughs> and then finally, the number one thing you can say to me after church, when it's a first time visitor that will have me coming back for more. We're having a potluck today. Can you stay? Yes. Nice. Doesn't if you didn't bring anything, there is so much food to go around. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh-huh. Pro tip, visit churches when they're having their picnics. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's what we did, and that's where we joined. Mm-hmm. That's <laughs> yes. right. Mm-hmm. But that line for me sums up, this is a church that loves each other and wants to love you too. Yes. Yeah. And I think when you walk into a church like that and you're getting Christ from the pulpit, Christ from the altar rail and Christ from the love of the people all around you. That is a place where you want to be. And that is a place where you want to serve and share that love with other people. So that the next time a visitor comes in the door, you'll be the one inviting them to the potluck. Mm-hmm. And that's just lovely. So mm-hmm. finally, takeaways. If you want to do some virtual visiting, 
COVID has you covered. Thanks to <laughs> <Right>? the <laughs> pandemic, everyone can yeah, visit churches time. all over the world without even leaving mm-hmm. your sofa. And I think this would be a great week, I think, for us to maybe have a thread in our Facebook group. So if you want to share a link to your church's online service mm-hmm. so that other people can do a little virtual church visiting, not shopping, mm-hmm. that we can definitely do that. And as Bree mentioned earlier, even if you are thoroughly committed to your home church, and bless you if you are, because that's the way to be. When you're on vacation, traveling, it's Mm -hmm. a great time to be an ambassador for Christ and do a little church visiting. Yeah, I agree with you, Bree. If you can manage it on a vacation, never Mm -hmm. skip church. We had Mm -hmm. a wonderful time once we were in the middle of a three-day road trip, got up early on Sunday in Des Moines to go stop in at a random LCMS church that had a service at the right time. And it was a great way to break up a long car trip. Yes. Nice. The LCMS church locator, and I'll put a link in the notes to this, is a wonderful tool for finding churches in your area. Mm -hmm. Pro tip, it's a little clunky. It's a great tool, little clunky, but plug in just the zip code you're working with and you can pull up all the churches within a certain mileage radius, not just the ones in exactly that town. Yes. Um, but if you know how to use it, it's wonderful. And this is this is such a recommendation from left field, and I'm not going to recommend it wholeheartedly because it's not Lutheran, but it is fun. <laughs> if you want to see ch- church shopping at its absolute weirdest, Oh, no. There's an oddball Christian comedy website called shipoffools.com. Hmm. And they have an entire section devoted to years of reports from what they call mystery worshipers, like mystery oh, shoppers. No! <laughs> <laughs> Wow. And they report on their experience as first time visitors at various Protestant churches in the United States, the United Mm. Kingdom and Canada. And these are I don't think I've ever seen an LCMS church show up in this that you'll see, you know, Anglican, a lot of Anglican churches, Baptist, etc. But they have a, a set list of questions like. What were the first words that you heard when the word service started and how were the pews? And it's I mean, it's a really interesting perspective on what people actually notice when they walk into a church building and huh. just interesting reading. But like I said, not Lutheran, nor do they really visit Lutheran churches that much. It's just an interesting concept. So <laughs> there you have it. Our adventure in Lutheranism for this time around church shopping slash visiting let's just go church visiting yes mm, yes excellent. and may may god go with you in all your travels amen yes well, ladies if you have your own stories of church visiting and church picking if you've moved to a new area all of those adventures we'd love to hear about them you can join our group on facebook the lutheran ladies lounge and yes we will try to get a thread up there we haven't We used to do those threads at the very beginning of the pandemic of sharing churches and videos of churches, but we haven't done that in probably over a year. It's been a while. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, uh, we'll get that up in the group this week as well. So we can share the love of our, of our individual churches in the Facebook group. You can also join us on our Instagram page. Follow us there at Lutheran Ladies Lounge. You can find all of our podcasts at kfuo.org slash Lutheran Ladies Lounge or on the KFUO radio app, which you can download from either app store or on your favorite podcasting platform. You're listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Erin. I'm going to need to see the end-to-end process of your Holy Communion set up before I go up. (laughs) And I'm just here for the potluck. Yes! Views and opinions expressed on the Lutheran Ladies' Lounge podcast may not represent the official position of the management or ownership of KFUO Radio, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. The Lutheran Ladies' Lounge is produced by KFUO Radio and available at kfuo.org or wherever you get your podcasts. Join our community on Facebook in the Lutheran Ladies' Lounge.